Hello, welcome to Malvern Prep and Rolling Stones Economics. Today, uh, we're going to paint black question number three from this year's AP micro Macroeconomics test. And painting it black is Junior Ryan Sutton. Ryan, paint it black. So, Ryan, welcome. Here, here's question number three. The following table shows a number of donuts and cupcakes that Erica and John can produce in one day. The first question, question A, who has an absolute advantage in producing donuts? Please explain. So to figure out who has the absolute advantage in producing donuts, we need to see who can use their resources to produce more donuts, John or Erica. So John used his resources to produce 200 donuts, but Erica, as you see, can only use her resources to produce 150 donuts. So we can see here that John has the absolute advantage in producing donuts. Uh, very good, very good. Okay, so John can produce more, so he has the absolute advantage in that. Could you just mention, this was not on the test, but could you mention about cupcakes? Does somebody have an absolute advantage in cupcakes? Um, yeah, as you can see, John also has the absolute advantage in cupcakes because he can use his, his resources to produce 100 cupcakes, while Erica can only use uh, her resources to produce 50 cupcakes. So Ryan, in this case, John has is better in both, so what might we imply about John's incentive to specialize in trade? So John actually does not, um, cannot, uh, well he could, but he doesn't have to specialize in trade because he has the absolute advantage of both. And conversely, what about Erica? She has a what? So Erica has the absolute disadvantage of both uh, donuts, producing donuts and cupcakes. Very, very good. Okay, let's go on to second question, question B. Who has a comparative advantage, and what does that mean in producing donuts? Please explain comparative advantage. So uh, from our good friend Rob DeChico from the University of Virginia, we can see comparative advantage is producing a certain good at a lower opportunity cost. So um, to find the comparative advantage of John and Erica, um, we use a little method called over-under for output problems. Here, uh, other over. Um, uh, so one, um, for John to produce one donut, we put 100 over 200. And then that means he's giving up a half a cupcake to produce one donut. And um, we'll do the same thing down here with Erica. So to produce one donut, She's giving up 50 over 150 to make one third cupcakes. So um, do the same thing with cupcakes. No, so now, so who has the comparative advantage in donuts? Can you fill in that little oh. thing at the bottom? Who has the comparative advantage in donuts? Which was the question B. So um, Erica has the comparative advantage in donuts because her opportunity cost one third cupcakes is lower than John's opportunity cost one half. Cupcakes. That's a great explanation, and that totally explains question B. However, because before we go on to question C, could you explain the same thing on cupcakes? Yeah, for cupcakes, we'll do the same thing. We'll use other over, and um, we'll put, for John, 200 over 100 for cupcakes. And that means one cupcake is going to have to uh, give up two, because 200 over 100 donuts. And for Erica, um, 50 cupcakes, so one cupcake produced. She's going to put the other over, and then 150 over 50 is three donuts she's going to have to give up. So we can see that um, since John has lower opportunity cost in um, cupcakes, he has the comparative advantage. Ryan, that was explained perfectly, and it leads us on now to question number C, letter C. Assume that John and Erica decide to specialize. They decide to specialize according to their comparative advantages, and that one cupcake will be exchanged for four donuts. Part one of C is, first off, indicate whether or not specialization in trade are beneficial to John. All right, so according to their comparative advantages, John's going to produce cupcakes because he has the lower opportunity cost, which gives them the comparative advantage, and Erica is going to produce donuts because she is the one no opportunity cost of donuts. So, um, uh, part one, this, um, the, uh, the trade agreement, or the terms of trade, one cupcake and four donuts, John will benefit because his opportunity cost 
would be two cupcakes to get four donuts. But after this trade, um, he will only have to give up one uh, cupcake to get four donuts. Very good. And part two of question C is indicate whether or not specialization in trade are beneficial to Erica. So um, on the other hand, Erica will not benefit because her opportunity cost of, of not producing one cupcake is three donuts. But now um, through specialization and trade, she will have to pay four donuts um, for one cupcake instead of three. Very, very good. And it leads us to this short question, only one more part, part D. Assume that Erica and assume that Erica discovers a new cupcake production technique that will increase her daily production of cupcakes only, using donuts on the horizontal axis and uh, draw a correctly labeled production possibility curve for Erica before and after the technology change in cupcake production. So on our production possibility curve, we already have the before curve set up with uh, her 50 cupcakes and 150 donuts. And if Erica were to find a new technique and, and to produce cupcakes, um, it would increase like this. So there would be um, a shift in the graph to up towards cupcakes. Um, they wanted you to label that, so what would that new black curve be called? Give it a name. So this black curve would be called the PPC two curves, and here we have the one showing the shift in, and change in the production of cupcakes. Mr. Ryan Sutton, Rob DeChico, and the rest of the economics class here at Malvern Prep, awesome job, Ryan. Thank you for helping us with uh, the question number three on this year's 2016 AP macro examination. And Ryan, good job painting it black. Thank you.